Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'd like to say welcome. Welcome to Illyria. Welcome, 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 welcome to Illyria. <laughs> or just welcome if this is your first video that you're seeing. Um, I have my wig and a ponytail today. I haven't done this in so long, like probably not since the summer, so I'm kind of digging it. This video, I'm kind of exposing myself a little bit. <laughs> Really, um, yeah, just revealing um, what a procrastinator I was, <laughs> and um, or I guess what a bad student I was. I've probably said it like a million times before, but I was an English major, <laughs> um, and being an English major, especially since I switched my major halfway through my degree, um, there was a lot of reading, and because I switched halfway through, I really had to like jam-pack all my English courses in the last like couple years of my degree so there was a lot of reading and honestly I didn't do a very good job of keeping up with it I winged it like probably 60% of the time <laughs> um, it's embarrassing how many essays I've written that I never read the books for or I read the spark notes for it that's basically what this video should be called, is um, books that I read the spark notes of. <laughs> um, as you can tell by the title, in this video um, I'm going to be talking about books that I was supposed to read in university but didn't. But I have since read them. I've been on a reading challenge. And there were definitely some hits, some hard, hard misses. But yeah, I guess let's just start talking about some books. The first book that I want to talk about is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien, I believe is how you pronounce it. If not, I am very sorry. Um, and I was supposed to read this book for a class called Space and Place in Canadian Literature, which I took in third year. And it was a really great class. My prof was amazing, so shout out to her. She probably is not watching this, but um, really amazing prof. And honestly, the only reason I didn't get to this book while in during class, taking the class, was because it is, look, I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but it's like almost 500 pages. Yeah, so <laughs> my attention span usually checks out after like 300 pages, so this one, the length was a little bit daunting for me, and just like with all the other stuff that you have to read, like, anybody got time for that? <laughs> but I am so glad that I took the time to read this book now. It really was a great recommendation. Um, it actually is mostly about um, China and kind of the revolution and Tiananmen Square, and it's just like such a beautifully crafted story. Oh my god, there is a coyote in my backyard. What the heck? Oh my god, can I turn it around? Can you see? Like what the heck? Oh my god. This is just like coyote watch now. This isn't even a video about books. Oh my god. It's so close. Like look, this is literally like right under my windowsill. Um, anyways, sorry for that little um, coyote interruption. I can't tell if it's- oh it's still there. Well now you know, there are definitely coyotes in Toronto. <laughs> I'm just like looking at it. It's just like chilling in the backyard, you know, like prancing around in the snow. Um, I wonder, I've seen it with a buddy before, so I wonder where its buddy is. Um, yeah, that's slightly unnerving. <laughs> Coyote's just living its best life with this snow that we've got. <laughs> I think it's leaving now, the yard. But wow, that's crazy. I'm so happy that I got it on film. The last time they were in, they've been in our yard before and I had my phone and I was filming it. Um, but it turns out I didn't press record so I didn't actually film it. So that was great, but yeah, okay, I think it's it's gone now. Anyways, um, 
I was basically talking about this book. I can't remember exactly where I was, but I think um, the reason why we talked about this in that course was because it also kind of deals with um, what it's like to immigrate to Canada and sort of a little bit of it experiences around that. So I think that's why it was tied into this like Canadian lit course. And it's by a Canadian author too. But yeah, this book was just so good. Like I think I maybe gave it a four star on Goodreads and I have talked about it in one of my other videos too. Um, really only like not getting a star off because it was so long. But I think like with this kind of story with everything going on like it kind of had to be long in order to get everything you know all the plot points fleshed out and things but yeah really glad that i went back to read this kind of sad that i didn't read this while i was in school because it would have been really nice to know what was going on in class <laughs> i can't tell you the amount of times i went to class having not read the book and just you know taking notes anyway being very confused <laughs> but most of the time I would read the book after because like you need them sort of for essays but sometimes you just you just have to prioritize and the next one I'm going to talk about was Matthew Arnold's Culture and Anarchy and I was supposed to read this for a class called Victorian Poetry which I was really not looking forward to taking that class um, just because I'm really not into poetry but it actually turned out to be a lot better than I thought it was gonna be um, and obviously like this isn't this isn't poetry this is like a novel um, or like a really long essay I don't even really know how to describe this yeah it ended up being okay and I think um, the reason this book was on the syllabus was to kind of give like context to like what sort of mindset uh, the Victorian era was and sort of some of the cultural things going on um, which might have been nice at the time when I was <laughs> in the course but I mean hey we, we got through it we made it out the other side honestly I thought this was going to be really boring but it actually wasn't that bad um, compared to one of a similar book that I also read for this video too. This one would definitely was way better. Like a little bit of it was kind of like fluff and you know, but actually I think that he did bring up some really good points in here and it's basically like what the title is about. Like it kind of explores like what is culture and like how does culture evolve as society evolves. And um, yeah, it was, it was not bad. If you're very into like philosophy and culture and the Victorian era, I, I would recommend this. I mean, I don't know how many people like outside of academia would appreciate this book, but yeah, wasn't bad. Um, I also read um, Edmund Burke's A Philosophical Inquiry to the Sublime and Beautiful. And I was supposed to read this for a class on the romantics and I didn't get to it. <laughs> um, I honestly didn't do most of the readings for that class just because it's really not my thing but like I had to take the course like for my degree. And I read this and <laughs> let's just say I did not enjoy it. I would describe this as a basic bitch philosophy in that it tries to be really deep and meaningful but has zero substance <laughs> and it literally just talked about like nothing for like the entire thing like I don't know it was 140 pages and it honestly could have been summed up in like five or like or maybe ten but I don't know I was just really not into this one although there was this one funny thing about it one of the sections was literally called Proportion Not the Cause of Beauty in Vegetables. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but that was when I was just like, started laughing when I read that title. I just thought it was really funny. Nobody needs to read this book. <laughs> like maybe if you're into philosophy, you might like it, but it was just really not my thing. So glad that I didn't waste my time reading this then. I'm sad that it wasted my time now. Okay, the next book I'm gonna talk about is Charles Dickens' Great Expectations and honestly I do not have those for these books. I really was expecting it to be super boring 
Um, cause I'm not usually a fan of classics. Like if they're really good, like there have been a lot that have won me over, but there I'm much more into contemporary literature. Um, and this one I was supposed to read for a class that basically studied the history of the novel. It's safe to say I dropped that class. <laughs> yeah, it was not my thing. But so I dropped it before I was supposed to read this book. Um, but I picked it up a few days ago and actually it surprised me. It was not the worst. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. We'll just put it that way. One of the drawbacks is that it's pretty long. Like it was about 450 pages and it's like of like more dense, like, text and things although I actually found it was surprisingly a lot more readable than many of the other classics that I've read like it was easy to digest kind of and the format of it I thought was pretty similar to like what we read in novels today um which I mean I don't really know a lot of the background on this because I didn't stay in the course but I'm sure that probably a lot of modern novels are like based from this format um, today. I think I ended up giving this maybe a three star on Goodreads because the first 200 pages were <laughs> really boring, not gonna lie. Um, but actually the second half I thought really picked up. Um, not to say that like I was super intrigued by everything that was happening, but there were a few moments where I did kind of feel like I wanted, had to keep reading. Um, but they were kind of few and far between. Uh, one of the main drawbacks of this for me though was I just really did not like the main character. I just thought Pip was so shallow and ungrateful and honestly Joe and Biddy deserved better. I'll say it. I don't want to spoil anything but like when kind of the big plot twist of the book is revealed. Like Pip is just so ungrateful and I'm I was mad about it. I was mad about it, but I don't want to spoil. I would recommend this to anybody who is into the classics or possibly even somebody who wants to start getting into classics because it was like it wasn't a difficult read. I don't think it's more just the length and the first half is really slow, but I was surprised. It kind of sort of lives up to the hype. Okay, the next book I'm going to talk about I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> None of them good. It's um, William Faulkner's Absalom Absalom, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, and I think, I can't actually remember, but I think I was also supposed to read this for that novel course that I dropped. Um, but this book, this book, I honestly could not finish it. I got 100 pages in and I was, because I was trying to force myself to read it. And I was just, like, I just can't deal anymore. Like, one of my biggest issues with this book is just how, like, blatantly racist it is. And this is, like, a huge, like, debate within, like, the academic and the literary community about, like, should we still be reading classics that are, like, super racist? And, I mean, I don't want to get too much into that debate because that would be, like... I could talk about that for ages, but like in this book, it wasn't like the racism in it like didn't add any educational value. Like it wasn't like criticizing racism. Like it was just being racist, like racist comments like all the time that like did not need to be in there. I mean, racism really doesn't need to be in any books, but like, you know what I mean? Like it was just like like so many just like off like offhand comments and whatever that I'm like that makes me so uncomfortable like I just really really was disappointed because I've like William Faulkner like that's such a huge name in literature so I was like oh I hope this will be good but yeah I just really could not get past that honestly that was pretty one of the main reasons why I stopped reading it and another was that like the writing is just so like inaccessible all just and like the the run on sentences <laughs> the run on sentences literally murdered me i'll show you the first page 
this one page is two sentences like that's where the first sentence ends i'm just like and the whole like the rest of the book was just like that and the language was just so unnecessarily complicated like i get why people would like it like it's very like fancy and pretentious and whatnot the language is so embellished that like you couldn't even hardly tell what they were trying to say and like it didn't even add to like the beauty of the words you know it was just annoying to read and also like the characters they changed so much and were so confusing i'm like i have no idea who's talking right now because this like monologue has been going on for three pages and i've forgotten who's talking safe to say i did not like this book i was very disappointed um maybe i just need to read like different faulkner stories um if anyone has any recommendations um that aren't racist yeah i just i could not get on board with faulkner so the last book i'm going to talk about um is birdie by tracy lindbergh and i was supposed to read this for a class called canadian women's writing that i took in fourth year and honestly the only reason why i didn't read this book um was because I ran out of time. I actually did start it, but there was just so much going on, you know, that like I had to prioritize other things. Um, but I started this from the beginning, like when I reread it this time, because like I didn't remember what happened. And honestly, it makes me so sad because I really wanted to love this book and I did like it, but I ended up giving it a three stars on Goodreads. Well, I wanted to give it a 3.5, but I don't know if you're allowed to do that. <laughs> if if you can do half stars on Goodreads, please somebody tell me how to do that because I've just been like shafting so many books because I had to choose between like, you know, not you can't do any half stars, which bugs me. I liked um, Lindbergh's writing and I was really excited to see um, like stories focused on indigenous women but I think what held me back from giving this like four stars was that I was just so confused at the ending and I mean maybe it's because I was like finishing it at like midnight last night but like I literally don't know what happened like I'm so confused if somebody can please um, write what happened in the end of this book in the comments if you've read it um, that would be great because I don't want to spoil anything, but I kind of thought that one of the characters died, but now I honestly don't know. Like it was just, the ending was really confusing. This book also deals with a lot of really heavy subjects. I should probably actually put a warning out there that um, this book deals with um, a sexual assault, um, mental illness, and it also sort of talks about the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. This book, I wouldn't say is an enjoyable read just because of how how sad it is. But like I thought I thought that her writing was great. It could just get a little bit I feel like I need another word other than confusing. But like sometimes it could get a little bit confusing, like especially at the end. But and she also um, flips back and forth between a lot of different perspectives which I see kind of why she did it but for me it just made it hard to connect with any of the characters that way um, I don't know like I think if she maybe had done through less perspectives and like honed in on like maybe like two or three characters or like even just like two I think it would have been easier for readers to follow but then again at the same time like I kind of liked how broken it up and like the way that it flowed but yeah honestly and it was picked for a Canada Reads um selection but yeah I was slightly disappointed like this by no means is like a bad book and I would still want people to read this but I think it just wasn't, like, it didn't stand out to me as much as I had hoped it would. Maybe my expectations of this were just too high. I was just like, I was, after reading <laughs> a lot of those classics and whatever, I was just like, I need something. Something to make this video worthwhile. 
<laughs> that I didn't just waste my time. And I and I definitely didn't. Like this was worth the read. I just feel like I kind of wanted a bit more from it. And yeah, it just can somebody explain the end of this to me, please? I'm so lost. <laughs> um, okay, well, I don't really know what the point of that video was, but I will end with this. Kids, do your readings. <laughs> um, it would have made my time a lot easier, a lot less stressful. Um, there were definitely several times where after exams or submitting essays or whatnot that I would like have mental breakdowns because I thought that I wasn't going to graduate. So yeah, that was not fun. <laughs> I do not recommend. Um, but somehow I ended up getting away with it, which maybe I shouldn't be broadcasting. But yeah, honestly, just take as much as you can out of your university experience. Take it all in because Four years goes by so fast and you're gonna miss it. I know I miss it. One of the few regrets I have in my life was not taking advantage of university as much as I should have. Um, Cause now I miss like learning and talking about books all the time. Like I've, it is fun to do it on your own, but there's just something about like being in class and like doing class discussions and hearing the profs thoughts about things. So yeah. Um, basically, do your readings. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more. I'm gonna be doing a book haul. Um, I might even start filming it now. Would that be weird? <laughs> I'm just so excited about these books I got. Anyways, okay. Um, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>